All right. Hello. That looks like we're live. Yep, and it also looks like I'm caressing your thigh. Yep. Yeah. That is a dog. There's a dog here. There's a dog There's there. There's a here. There's a dog here yep. as well. So the purpose of this is uh, my wife is out right now, and we have this guy here. This is Leo. He's all of eight weeks old, and um, he, if we left him upstairs, he would uh, eat everything. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to have him here with us. Yep, and this one uh, has been starved for attention since Leo came right, home. Right, that so that's happens. my job. But anyways. Uh, Ryan only lets me come over when his wife is out. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I was here, Rick, you were in Nashville. Or... I was in Nashville and Murfreesboro. 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 Yeah. Murfreesboro. Yep. You were working with the uh, uh, the, the boys? The illustrious uh, boys of Hippocampus. Yep. Doing some tech work for them. Starting that whole thing out. It's great. Yeah, it's been fun. Um, I uh, They changed up their set list uh, <laughs> right before they started. And they were like, they changed it to a song where all their guitars are in drop C. And they were like, can you go take care of that? I was like, yeah, of course. And I, I don't know if uh, any of you have ever experienced something like this. But I'm going to tell you anyway. I walked out on stage to do it. And the crowd went ape shit. They thought... It was the show was oh, starting. Yeah, that one. And it is a long walk to the front man's guitar. Yeah. While they are screaming and cheering, and uh, then they realized something was going on, and they stopped. And then I picked up his guitar, and they were like, "Oh no, wait, it is him!" And then they started cheering again. <laughs> Do you look like him? Nope. Nope. Okay. Nope. Nope. But yeah, it was fun. Cool. Never been to Murfreesboro. Murfreesboro. Uh, there's a we played at Middle Tennessee State. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're at Middle Tennessee State, hit me in the comments if you ever lived in Chart Hall. <laughs> this is a real place. <laughs> it's fantastic. I know. All right, well, welcome to Demos in the Dark Live. I'm Ryan. I'm Kai. And um, here we go. screwed it up hey I, yeah. ryan's learning some new technology he yeah. was distracted by all the petting i was mm -hmm. um so tonight we have a friend of mine and a dude who i uh have just loads of respect for um he manages to get onto my best of list which was published today uh he manages to get on that um almost every year and um so, uh, without uh, further ado, uh, here is Tom Cram of Spiral mm. Electric. Mm. Mm. Yes. Wow. Hey. Mr. Mr. Of course, short for Thomas Cramus. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Oh, I have a muted. Look. You do have a muted. Yep. There you go. Yeah. There you go. There All right. He is. Hello. Yeah, I, my dear. Gentlemen. I, doctor. <laughs> sir. <laughs> Uh, I do, yeah, I, so I, I got this, um, our sponsor for this week is Loop Deck. Mm, excellent. I think <laughs> I'm wearing the sweatshirt. Nope, uh, I'm nope, not. That is not nope. your Loop So, Get yeah, but, um, oh, well. technology is supposed to make life a little bit faster, and, uh, it will at some point, just not today. We're all about learning curves here. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, how you what, doing, What's the name man? of that company again? Loop Deck? Thanks for asking. Loop, sponsored Loop by Deck. Loop Deck. Yeah, there we are. We are sponsored by Loop Deck. They don't know it. Mm -hmm. We're not going to tell them. <laughs> we'll just send them an invoice. Yep. Um, so, so far, yes, Mason. And Mason is here, which is good. Uh, he had to do a double take on the, the knee dog caressing. <laughs> <laughs> so, how you doing, Tom? You, had to, you cleaned your studio. That looks good. I did. I did. Um, you're... Oh! I, I... I was forced to so that uh, I wouldn't be embarrassed from uh, the camera angle. Yeah. Although what you mm -hmm. can't see is the floor. Yeah. And the floor is still messy as I'll get Show out. Show the yeah. floor. Show uh, pedals the everywhere. floor. Yeah. So, Are you serious? All right. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> like down. 
Oh yeah. That's, that's not that's bad. Oh, is that bamboo? At least it's in a pile. Pedals everywhere. At least they're in piles. More that guitars. Better than my studio. Um, and now the camera angle's all screwed up. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. There we go. Mr. X Kane just X Kane just dropped in. Hello. So, ah. He's the he's he's a powerhouse. He's one of my, that's right. one of my faves. Um. Interesting fact. Uh, you were the guy who uh, kind of inspired me to look into Yamaha guitars. Oh. Really? Yeah. Because you and I had a discussion, and you were talking about how you love Yamaha guitars. And, uh... Hey, Jay. Hey, Jay Foster Guitar. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Look at that thing. Yamaha wow. Weddington. Beautiful. Is that, uh... Love this guitar. Is that pretty rare? Very rare. This is a this is a Rich Lasner joint. Okay. Um, neck through carved. See, can you see how the carved oh, back oh there? Oh my goodness! Carved oh. back. It's it's a Les Paul style, but it has a Strat style switch on it. Yeah. And so the way in, you can't tell from the camera, this is sparkle black. Ooh. The way you're holding it makes me think it's pretty light. No. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I was nervous was, for a second. First time I, I swear to God, it's it's got to be like like. Oh, Both of smokes. these. This one's actually the lighter one, but they've, they've got to be like twelve pounds. Mm. Yeah, that'll hurt. That's light. So you can see the carved back, the carved neck My on this goodness. one a little bit better. Wow, that is. Those are cool. Yeah. Yammies, and my my s my SBG, the mm -hmm. one that's all mashed or bashed up, is in the truck. So why is uh, why is it? Oh, you mean like it's used? Fast up or oh, like like no you know, i just haven't brought it in the house I, I if i if i had known you were going to talk about it, i would have had it here but, all right uh, well next time next time <laughs> next time like next time let's schedule one and we just talk about yamaha guitars okay but um yeah no i mean and you know i uh we worked together it, it was a rev star that you did first right mm -hmm. we worked together on that on that rev star and um and i um i was kind of like well you know that's not really the kind of thing that fits with my channel or anything like that but you know i just had this talk with tom and he loves your stuff so send it over and and i got it and it was like holy crap like this guitar is mm -hmm. amazing um so then we went to the the sa2200 which oh yeah phenomenal like, feels oh my gosh charles from silk tone is here Woo! yes can we uh, see the right silk tone in the back it's nope, back it's, the the, other it's way. back behind my head. There it there is. There it is. There it is, hey, Charles. Buddy. It's back there. Yeah. Um You must be you must be popular with the gear folks, Tom. <laughs> I know a few. You know a couple. Yeah. Um so uh we were talking uh ahead of time because I had never really put together the history of or the impetus of uh spiral electric becoming a thing. So for those who don't know, and I imagine everybody knows um you were you were like the head designer at at dod so um so i worked at Harmon for um over 20 years and and in kind of a, a secure circuitous circuitous route mm -hmm. i don't even um, know what it means up, so. <laughs> morning jacket <laughs> I ended up running Digitech uh, for about eight years, just a little under eight years, and in the process, um, I revived DoD as well. Yeah. Um, so uh, I was um, my my official title was was marketing manager, um, but I did everything. Yeah. Um, all the way down to you know like some of the graphics, you know, programming of like the Polar and Obscura, um, things like that. So it just you know the Rubberneck was my baby. Mm -hmm. um, That's a you great know, pedal. Such a good pedal. Thank you, sir. That, Sirs, that yeah. and um, Carcosa is another one that was just like. Yeah, Carcosa, another one of my babies. Um, that that one has a, a an interesting story that goes back to uh, probably twenty ten, maybe twenty eleven, um, on a visit to Chicago Music Exchange. Um, I don't know if you guys have been there before, but that it's an amazing, <laughs> amazing fucking store. Yeah, we, we mm -hmm. live in the Midwest. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> But uh, so I, I went there, and if you've been there, they, they have a they have like this huge table with just full of pedals uh, and a display, and th there must have been 400, 500 pedals on there, and so I was kind of going through systematically trying different ones, and they had a pristine uh, Maestro 
um, MFZ1S. And I went back in the, uh, the, uh, one of the practice rooms and played it. I'm just like, Oh my God, this, this is the circuit. And that's the circuit that eventually led to the, the Carcosa. There's more to the story. It, it, it's, you know, I wanted to buy that one, but it, they wanted like 500 bucks for it. And I, I couldn't afford it then. You didn't have the Digitech and... card? Just you know what? I, I, I should have thought of that at the time, but Build I didn't. I, I guess it was just Harmon. too. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I could have probably charged. You know, well, here's the problem, though, is if I had charged it to Harmon, it would have been Harmon's. Ah. Well, I wanted it for myself. And you, were like, and you were like, if I can't have it, nobody no one can. can. No one can have it. smashed it on the ground <laughs> yep. the Chicago Music Exchange. <laughs> And they were like, that'll, that'll yeah, so, still be five hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. But you, the good thing is, he got a quick look at the circuitry after he smashed yep. it over. I had, I, just, I actually had a screwdriver in my pocket. Um, I always walk around with a screwdriver in my pocket. Mm -hmm. um, hey, is that a screwdriver but, uh, in your pocket? You're just happy to see. Yeah, me? are you just, are you just happy to see me? It has a flat um, head. Uh, it's <laughs> uh, por, por que dos? Yeah. Why not both? Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, so, so I opened it up. And, and checked out the circuit and and then uh, we don't, when I got back home did a ton of research but uh, yeah that's that's the the basis for the the carcosa which then led to the black spiral which is part of spiral electronic electric effects so <laughs> I do not have a black spiral and Neither I need to I. get my hands on a black spiral and I, so here's the funny thing I have been just remember in college when you know like people would talk about pleasure reading and you'd be like what is pleasure reading um <laughs> That's like Cosmo. That's kind of how I, you know, or like people are like, oh, did you read the latest Stephen King? And you'd be like, I, no, I'm no. reading Calculus, you fucker. Um, Taking Calculus was your first mistake. <laughs> but that's kind of the position I'm in right now with um, my calendar has just been so full. And I was looking for something that I have a deadline on today. And I came across this. Uh oh. And it is unopened, and it is from you. <laughs> and uh, I believe it is the summer cyan that I purchased, and I. You have, haven't even cracked it open yet. Haven't even cracked it open yet because I. Do you know, it right now. Let's I, do it. Your <laughs> yeah, first live right unboxing. Um, there's a on the top of the AC30. There's a. Uh, oh yeah, there is. All right. All right. Okay, so so while you're unboxing that, I'm gonna pour myself a tasty beverage. Wow, yeah, do exciting. that. Um, so uh, good question here. Ooh, that looks. I don't know much about booze, but that looks expensive. What? Lagavulin. Uh, oh. Stuart, um, I'm not gonna grab that. No, I don't want to. <laughs> Stuart uh, says hello, from Oz. Uh, and Stuart has always got some interesting questions. Um. And uh, he says he loves the secret chord. And then yes. the question is, and I love the secret chord as well, but this question is, what is the secret to leaving the corporate world? Mm. And I think we discussed, I don't think it was much of, we discussed that a little bit. Uh, well, so the, uh, I, I am, I'm the wrong guy to ask because I didn't leave. I got booted. Um, yeah. So but, that's uh, the secret. There you have it. Yeah, it's, it's but the thing is, is I knew I was going to get booted. So, so even when I was uh, in the black at, at Digitech and DoD and doing really well, I knew that it, it was a limited thing. I knew that they would get tired of me at some point. And so what I did is I did whatever the hell I wanted. Yeah, and that worked. Um, that worked out really well. So this is... Uh, Gorgeous, of course. Um, <laughs> I am so I I am so excited to to try this out. Uh, this uh, this is a family affair here. It really is. Um, how you doing, bud? You want to say hi to Tom? Mm -hmm. yeah, right. well, come come, on, right, come here. right here. Come right here. Back here. Okay. Well, the, 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 yep. There we go. In. There we go. Oh, you, you just came to see the puppy, didn't you? Yeah. Not me, oh. not Tom. <laughs> just came to see the puppy. Hello. That's fine. <laughs> um, you did do whatever you wanted, and that that led to some really cool puppies. Yeah, it's um, I I knew that. 
Okay. That okay. I would be I, I would be in trouble if I did what they said, Later, or if I didn't do what they say. That's a and tough so, position to be in. So uh, it it kind of it did suck for a while, um, for a long while. But it, it also I, I kind of it was kind of freeing. It was it was one of those things where it's like you know I'm gonna get beat up for this no matter what I do, so I'm gonna get it beat up for something legit. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, really, like the. Um... I mean, it's a, you know, turning, turning lemons into lemonade. Like, mm-hmm. Spiral is an amazing brand. And, you know, like, I'm, I'm sure that there are, I'm sure that there are probably some benefits to having been at Harmon that, you know, outweigh running it on your own. But which do you prefer? Like, do you prefer, you know, having to... Because I mean, you're you're working more, you know, going into business for yourself. You're working more than you would be otherwise. But I don't know. yeah, it, it's there. There are there are pros and cons, but there are more pros to doing it myself. Um, you know, one of the pros for working for Digitech was, of course, they they had you know bigger budgets. They had you know yeah. engineering teams that I could you know make use of, and and things like that. So because because I'm a hack engineer, I, I don't know anything. I, I just I come from the world of modding, so the you know having people who actually know what they're talking about helps. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, doing digital and stuff like that, that could be you know more easily accomplished by a larger company with a budget and engineers. Mm-hmm. That's one of the reasons why I haven't done anything digital with with uh, Spiral, is because I don't know shit about it. Um, yeah. You know, I, my my expertise is is in analog, and so I'm kind of exploring that kind of stuff. I would like to get into digital. But, uh, you know, the, the, and then the pros for, for doing Spiral are, you know, my, my, I'm working all the time, but I also have more time. Um, yeah. You know, I'm, I, it's, I, I, I don't shut off, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, circuits and, and the next pedal and stuff like that constantly, mm-hmm. but I can also do that with my family. And yeah. so it's, I mean, there's, there's a lot more positives. It's, it's, plus I, I, I get to do, you know, stuff that I couldn't do at Digitech, you know, I, I get to explore, you know, more esoteric stuff. I mean, the, I, even though I was doing what I wanted to do at Digitech and DOD, um, I still had to keep in mind the market. I still had to keep in mind that this was, you know, for a specific, you know, guitar player. Mm-hmm. And with Spiral, you know, I don't have to worry about that at all. I'm just doing whatever the hell I want. Yeah. And, and with, with the hopes that, you know, other guitar players, you know, sync with what I'm doing. But it's so it's it's less being market driven and more being you know uh, sonically and you know that driven that way. Yeah. Are, are there any pedals sense? that have kind of surprised you where you started them as more of like one of those like art pieces almost that people seem to identify with or take to? Yeah. So the, the there there's, there's actually quite a few. So the 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 secret chord is a good example. Mm-hmm. The secret chord you know started as um, a kind of a custom version of the white. The white spiral, and it was uh, my my bass player buddy wanted a couple of different modifications, oh. and I started digging into it, and um, everything I did started sounding cool. It was just, it was just one of those things where it was just, it just kind of cascaded into this cool thing. I'm like, you know, I, I this needs to be its own pedal, and uh, it, which is interesting because the white itself was a surprise because I, the, the the circuit for the white actually came to me in a dream. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I woke up and wrote it down, you know, wrote down the circuit and then started building. I, I found out later, um, you know, I should have known this, but I found out later it was very much similar to a whole bunch of other circuits that are out there. But, uh, you know, still it was, you know, the, the, the main kernel of the inspiration was, you know, actually from a dream. But, uh, Weird. yeah. So, That's why. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> I dream of songs occasionally. I, I don't. I don't. Yeah. I don't remember my. I don't remember my dreams at all. Oh, Ch- Charles is coming in with a good. So Charles. Yep. Charles is coming in with a good dad joke. Uh, you. You. You're, what you're trying to tell us is that the the secret chord, spiraled. It spiraled into existence. It all did. Spiraled from yeah. There. It, you know. Yeah, you know what my. Spiraling. You. You know one of my favorite things, and it was kind of. I didn't know anything about it, um, and I, had never had any. Um, any real direct contact with anyone who was a part of this kind of counterculture movement. Um, but, uh, 
I think I did my first spiral video and I put your logo up there. Do you remember this? And then I had a guy coming at me about Pizzagate and all, and because the yes. the spiral is one yes. of the and, and so so Spiral Electric introduced me firsthand to QAnon, which was kind of interesting. Which is remarkable because I do hear your pedals run on adrenochrome. Do you want to tell us about <laughs> that at all? No, so so I ran into that too. That there was a there was a guy on TGP. Um, so I'd never heard of this. I, I didn't I didn't know the connection at all. But there was a guy on TGP on one of the threads that was that was saying um, he was being really oblique about it. But he, he was he was saying you know the the, the logo disturbs me. And I'm like, yeah. dude, it's it's a spiral. It's What's a to circle. be disturbed by? You know, it's it's millennia millennia old. And. Uh, Again, he was still kind of being oblique and 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 saying, "Well, you know, there there it has some connotations," and I'm like, "Well, you know, the the de descending spiral, you know, is a is a, supposed to represent bad luck, but mine's an ascending spiral, which means you know, expanding your vision and you know, and good things." Yeah. And he's like, "No, no, 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 nothing like that." And finally, after you know, like twelve, thirteen, fourteen posts. It turns out that it, it was a you know the, the kind of the, the QAnon thing. He says it represents witchcraft and and stuff like that. And I'm like, dude, that's that's that is all in your head. That's got mm -hmm. nothing to do with where it came from for me. So yeah, I've I've run into that too. It's kind of it's kind of interesting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of interesting. So this is um and this is gonna this is gonna come uh, along with this question here. So uh, Grant it, he says, Tom. Uh, where did your aesthetic influence come from? Your pedals have such an individual and fantastic look. Besides and, Hillary Clinton, of course. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, and, mm -hmm. you know, um, I love I love that they come down or come in these boxes with these maps. I've, I've noticed the guys on TGP are, are um, they're piecing together pieces of the maps that come from their uh, from their boxes. So it's just a presentation. I've never seen this. Actually. Absolutely really beautiful. Excited. Um, and you know, here's something kind of funny. This one does not have a map in it. Uh, so, so no, for the for the special that is a for the special pizza. edition summer science, I did I did different paper for them. Okay. Um, and then so you know it had to be pointed out to me. It's weird that it had to be pointed out to me that the enclosure is upside down. The enclosure is what upside down? Yes. Upside down. Yep. It had it had to be pointed out to me. I. Yes. I mean, and I'm talking like I had had like four of your pedals before somebody was like, you know, those enclosures are upside down. I was like, what? And I looked at it. But uh, yeah, so where did, where did, uh, where's the inspiration for this? There, There is something very visual about Spiral Electric that um, is hard to ignore. Um, so I'm, I'm re really into, really into brutalism. Um, I'm really into Bauhaus. I'm really into um, in industrial, industrial design. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of where that came from. You know, it was, it was kind of a departure from the Digitech and DoD thing, which again, I was designing for a particular guitarist and with, with Spiral, I was able to do what I wanted. And I'm also a, a motorcyclist. Um, so I have a very, you know, I, I, I weld my own parts and things like that. So really? I like working with metal a lot. I have some techniques for, for corroding metal. And so I kind of tried to meld that whole, uh, hot rod car culture, you know, uh, rat rod, um, you know, also, you know, the metal flake yeah. and the, the bright colors with raw metal, that kind of right. stuff. Um, so that's kind of what I'm trying to meld with, with spiral. It's, it's honoring the materials, but also, uh, you know, being well within that, that industrial car culture thing. Yeah. You, uh, do, do you have, uh, do you do old cars as well? No, 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 no cars, motorcycles Just are kind motorcycles. of my thing. Okay. Yeah. I've got a, a 79 FL that I've been customizing for Ooh. a decade at least. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I have a, I have an old bet, um, that, which is not a motorcycle. I have an eighties Honda <laughs> Spree. <laughs> also not a motorcycle. Nope. Closer than you. Um, I, you seem to be going for a full on sensory thing because with this pedal, came some whiskey soaked oak chips for the grill that are uh uh this this ends with send a prayer for great tone to the heavens when you use these on your grill 
Not saying the offering will work, but it couldn't hurt. What's the inspiration for this? Um, so the, uh, you know how when you get a new Les Paul, mm -hmm. um, or basically any any Gibson with with uh, with lacquer, mm -hmm. and you open that case, and you're hit with that smell. Yeah. Um, honestly, that that is, you know, there's a lot of a lot of good things to like about getting a new you know a new Gibson, but that's right up there with it. But that 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 smell is, associates with Gibsons to me, mm -hmm. and so I kind of wanted to do something similar where when people open the box, they were hit with the smell. And I was that made them yeah. think of our, my pedals. So, you know what's what's kind of a, what's kind of amazing about this, and I, I so and, and I'm gonna draw a parallel here that may not be there. So if, you know, feel free to tell me that I'm full of shit if the parallel's not there. Um, but you just talked about QAnon. You can't be worse than that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think I, I. You ever played with like a a, a very big band that for whatever reason they're doing a small gig like a small club gig for whatever whether it's a fundraiser or something like that they're you know and they'll say something like to the effect of like you know like oh man it's so fun to be back like doing this because i can actually you know like you know i can connect with people mm -hmm. in the you know connect with the audience in a way that i'm not able to when i'm playing stadiums and um and stuff like that um and what i'm hearing from you on this is is you're creating not you like you're not just creating a pedal you're creating an entire experience mm -hmm. you know from the from the unwrap to you know all of it and that's something that you wouldn't have been able to get away with before because you know like but it's something you can do now it, it sounds like and and that's a cool thing too creating a, i mean like I think Matthew from 1981 in Inventions was a mm -hmm. good example of like super really creating a super like the whole the, the experience is almost more memorable than the pedal itself. With yeah, so so the, the I mean it sounds completely pretentious um, when you start getting into stuff stuff like that, but it it, it is actually true, um, and it doesn't it doesn't derive honestly from from some sort of artistic impulse, even though that's there. It is, it is more of a, um, I don't know, man, you know, that there's the experience when you get a new cool pedal, you know, it's, I love, I love the whole thing from, from when you, when it first arrives to when you get it out of the thing and you take a look at it and you, you know, you plug it in and it, and it makes a sound you've never heard before, or it's a sound that you're, you know, super familiar with and mm -hmm. that you're looking for or whatever. That whole experience to me is Oh God, this, I'm going to sound like a total dick. It's, 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 it's almost holy. You know what I mean? It's, it's because, because for me, it's, it's a way to, it's a way to facilitate your art. Uh -huh. You know, it's, 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 it's uh, the way I always equate it is it's like a painter with paintbrushes. You know, it, it's the, the, the pedals are the paintbrush that allows me to create a song or create a riff or whatever. And I, I say all the time that there's a riff in every pedal but uh, it's it's you know it's the whole experience. Yeah. And yeah. and it's not like I'm trying to do some kind of you know goofy apple thing or anything like that. It's 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 more that I I I want to communicate to the person that has just now laid out you know a significant chunk of cash as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. um, to communicate that I give a shit. Yeah. Um, because I do. You know. And and to me, if if I had spent all this time you know working on the aesthetics and the sonics of a pedal, and then threw it in a cardboard box. I, I think it's disrespectful. Mm -hmm. I think that's a I, I, it, that sounds totally pretentious, dude. No, that you sounds, know, yep, uh, you no. sound like a dick. Thanks, that's yeah. our time. Yeah, <laughs> let's get uh. out of here. <laughs> no, I this like I just even down to the way that this pedal fits. I'm trying to get it in the light here. Yeah, let's fits do Fits in the box, just the way it rests in that box. Like putting it back in, I was I got a little yeah. a little something. Yeah, because it's you've clearly thought about everything when it comes to this pedal um ooh, and i got a whiff of the smell again <laughs> it's just very i'm having a great time i don't even know what this sounds like i don't watch ryan's channel and even if i did he just opened it um so i yeah i love this sorry did you know that doesn't matter i'm on your channel <laughs> yeah um uh...
Thanks. So, you know, what? it's and, and there are lots of guys out there that, that call me silly for doing this stuff. And, and they're they're right. I mean, I, I'll agree with them that this this going to that degree to, to that degree is kind of silly. Um, but, you know, I because I, I totally understand that there's some guys who buy pedals that are completely in it for the util, utilitarianism. They're buying a tool. They're not buying a paintbrush. They're buying a tool. And I get that. I yeah. totally get that. I, I have some pedals that I bought because they're tools. Yeah. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do something a little, a little different. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mason, uh, he, he said, you know, this is part of what boutique is all about. You know, we've never really defined boutique, but you know, mm -hmm. this could be a good, um, a good kind of mindset to add to that. Um, and our friend Stuart, he said, Tom, Tom's pedals are a work of art and work for making art. So thank you for that. Uh, Love that. And we have had, uh, we have a, usually we save these questions for the end. They're just flying in uh, now, so I'm going to take them. Um, uh, Bobo wants to know what the Demi Fuzz is based on. Um, and also. Oh, right there. Yeah. Quick on the draw. What's the difference between the Carcosa Black and Demi? All right, so let's let's start from the beginning, um, which is the F, Maestro FZ1S. Mm -hmm. So that Maestro FZ1S is what led to the Carcosa. And if you've ever played a Maestro FZ1S, there's one mode that sounds awesome and one mode that sounds like total garbage. And so uh, my goal with the Carcosa was to take that one mode that sounded awesome and then the mode that sounded like garbage make it sound even awesomer. Mm -hmm. um, and so in my opinion, that, you know, we accomplished that pretty well yeah um but that's that that turned into the, the the demi and holly mode and what i noticed over the years after the carcosa was released is 99.9 percent .9 of guitar players out there play the carcosa in demi mode and that's that's the fatter thicker mm -hmm. more bassier mode mm -hmm. and so uh with the black coming out which is a, a kind of a, a more sophisticated offshoot of that I had been experimenting with doing a bunch of uh, stuff in what I call my incubator. That's kind of my my uh, experimental shop mm -hmm. where, I, where I actually mod my own pedals. And, it, you know, if it turns out cool, I'll sell, you know, I'll sell a one off and, and people get to own something that I, that I kind of hmm. destroyed. Cool. Um, destroyed. But uh, I, I, I made a, a two, two pedals, a black one and a silver one called the Demi, uh, the, the Demi Shadow and the Demi Silver. And it was the demi mode of the Carcosa with some tweaks, mm -hmm. and um, those both sold like like that. They were gone, but uh, I still had the the breadboarded circuit that I'd been messing with to, to actually arrive there, and I kept over the years kept coming back to that circuit, going, you know, there's just something cool about it. Yeah. And then when I started thinking about doing something that was a, a well, so this 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 eventually led to a, a problem where there were a lot of guitar players that were telling me they, they just can't afford my stuff. And I'm completely sympathetic to that. I, I get it. You know, I understand, like I said earlier that, you know, 249 is a chunk of change for yep, a lot of people. Absolutely. And so I wanted to do something that was, you know, more accessible. And, you know, I, I'd been trying to do some, some cheaper versions of, uh, of my stuff. Like the white was, was 139. Oh, sorry. I mean, 199. And uh, so I was, I was trying to move some stuff a little bit further down, but you know, my, my costs are just high. Yeah. And so I started thinking about it, you know, I, I was like, I could do a mini pedal, you know, with top jacks, that's you yeah. know, these top jacks right that's here. All, that's what all the kids want. And, and use the, the, the Demi that I had done as the basis for the, the, uh, the Demi fuzz. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't have it here. I have it at the shop, but uh, the, the original, um, the original prototype I made, I played it and I'm like, God, this is awesome. I, this has to, has to be made. Yeah. And so I went to a buddy of mine that, that, uh, actually it's the same guy that does the, that did, that did the DOD stuff. And I had him build a version of that circuit. That's the Demi. Yeah. So, did so you this have is that, 149. Did you have that CM then? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Off that um, original circuit. And that was, uh, I mean, so, I mean, that pedal was just, somewhat recently released and you have been thinking about it for a lot longer than that like this was oh yeah for for years for yeah. years it, it's uh i've been wanting to do um the what so i'm calling this this form factor the the, the small yeah um i've been wanting to do a small form factor since day one mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the, 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 the circuits and the way that I build it just wasn't conducive to that. Yeah. I, I had done some smaller stuff for some friends and, and things like that, but nothing that, that uh, you know, on a production level. And the more I started thinking about it, the more I realized that for, for the lower price point, the small was probably the best bet. Yeah. And so I went for it and it turned out to be my best selling pedal. <laughs> Can't argue with that, right? Oh. Well, I mean, I got to send you one, dude. Yeah, man. I would love to, uh, I would love to film one of those up. Ryan hates top jacks. So you might as well <laughs> send it to me. <laughs> you don't, you don't uh, like, you don't like the top jacks. No, I, no, he just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah yeah i'll uh i'll see if i can cook up something uh it, you know like you said it, well I, uh, if i can cook up something cooler than andy i i always try i don't always succeed but i always try yeah, it's, it's, yeah andy's demo turned out too. really cool yeah he, he he really got it i mean it's it's a fuzz with a point of view and yeah you know, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but that's kind of that description of all my stuff. So, nor should it be. I mean, like you know, like I don't know. Is there what's a what's a guitar pedal for everyone? A TU two. That's what I was. <laughs> the Polytune Mini. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, ever at this point, there is a pedal for just about everything, and so rather than trying to bump the Tube Screamer out of its position. Like the fact that you are doing something that speaks to you, none of us are that individual where like something that speaks to us personally isn't going to speak to anybody else. And uh -huh. that seems to me like the only thing you can do at this point is make stuff that you enjoy. And then lo and behold, here are a bunch of people clamoring for your stuff. That makes a whole lot of sense to yeah. me. So, I mean, like, this is a oh, Mason, this is a hot take Ma from Mason. Mason wants to fight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he says mini pedals. Oops, what happened here? I don't know. Is oh, it... did we freeze? Or did no. he freeze? I think my. He said mini pedals aren't boutique. Argue amongst yourselves. Now, Mason. Uh, first off, I would say a one twenty five B is not a mini pedal. Yeah. Um, yeah. You have I to make the distinction say, between uh, like a, if, if mini or micro. Yeah, you're talking mm -hmm. you're talking like 1590A. Yeah. For for mini pedals. Fairfield accountant. Okay, any, so here's anything here's... that David Ranger has made. Yep. Uh, sorry, I'm backwards, so I'm having a hard time. So there's there's a what I call a micro pedal. That's the yeah. the orange Omec. Yeah. Yeah. And there's the demi. Yeah. Right, so we, we put it on the same level. Yeah. So this this is what I consider to be a micro pedal. This is a mini pedal. Okay. Can you consider David Ranger's pedals mini though? Because he's got that weird little thingy off. Well, let's 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 compare. There's. Yeah. Yeah. There's but he's Ranger. got the little controller for so many of them. Yeah. No. That's. I mean, it's a fifteen ninety eight. Yeah, but then he's got that little thing that shoots off. The expression. Yeah. Yeah, the little little piezo thing or piezo. Yeah. Well, so mean, yeah, this, this I would say that's a micro. Yeah. But once you have all the attachments, is it really? uh, David, this, come this on pedal, the show this and fight awesome, me. awesome, by the way. The mini bar. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's so cool. Just say all of his stuff isn't amazing. I yeah. love it. Um, yeah, I love, I love, I love David Ranger as a person and uh, as a designer. It's some of his stuff is just it, it like goes way over my head. Mm -hmm. um, and um but his his fuzzes i'm actually i'm actually it's weird i am a collector of ranger uh uh the big box fuzzes that he has made and so i i have i believe one of every single one that he's done. Do, do you have the one that has the blade switch yeah i, I have a couple of them with blade switches I, I love that blade switch yeah you know the thing that's cool about david you know how we were talking earlier about kind of just following your own muse and doing your own thing and the mm -hmm. people of like mind will yep. mm -hmm. will connect up i mean that's that's david ranger to a t right there yep yep and he's just he's on a, his own wavelength he is he that's a he's on his own yeah. planet um he is uh but you know he's a peach and um and it's you know i mean i'll never forget you know like um you know at, at nam like you'd walk down a, a row of you know with a lot of great builders and stuff like that, then you would see 
a pile up of people and they were always around David's boot, you know, because he had a pedal that you poured cola in and it would sound different than if you poured wine in it, you know, like it was, just, you know, like he is, he is the mad, he is the mm -hmm. mad scientist. Um, do you know that he played on a, I mean, like, have you ever looked at his credits, his writing or his, no. per, his no. musical uh -huh. credits? He, he's played on Tina Turner records. No way. Yes. That's awesome. Like he has, he has a pretty long list of, of people that he's played with and they're not small. Like, I mean, Tina's no slouch. No, that's wild. Um, I, I, yeah, it was '80s Tina, but you know, I mean, Tina's I'll take Tina. It. Um, so yeah, M Mad Mad Max era yeah. or Beyond Thunderdome era Tina. Yes, that, that's but, that's not bad, Tina. No. Yeah. Um, which, by the way, uh, did you guys watch the the Dune reboot? Yes, I did. I did. Did you you stayed awake through the whole thing? Mm-hmm. Saw it twice. twice. You stayed awake twice. I'm I'm a nerd, dude. I love every I loved every it. second of it. I loved it. Yep. Yeah. I was a little uh I was both happy and sad because they didn't I don't think they advertised it as Dune Part One. But then yeah. it came up on the screen Dune Part One and I was like, Oh. No. Okay. All right. Well and the the funny thing is I don't know if you guys have ever read the books at all mm. but it, it's, it's, it's that's what was said to me like uh brett from everyday guitarist demos he's like well did you read the books i'm like read we already covered <laughs> reading for pleasure yeah. here yeah well, but the, the so it, it's the funny thing is 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 even though it's part one it actually is like the first quarter yes of the first book so yes <laughs> he's got a lot to cover that's in, why in, uh, it, part, two. part one came up and i was like let's see how they're gonna do this and then it ended where it ended and i was like oh okay I guess we got six more of these. That'll be fun. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. So is that, are they going to make, is the plan to make Dune like the next like Star Wars franchise? It seems they like They could. It. They could. I mean, yeah. honestly, it's, I think, I think it's a, a more complex and compelling world. You honestly um, watch it and you see where George Lucas got all his stuff. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred mm -hmm. percent. And that's coming. I'm a massive Star Wars nerd. I love Star Wars. But then like seeing it visually rather than reading the book i'm like oh yeah right 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 got it cool. so, so my my wife had a criticism that i thought was pretty legit um because you know i i was i kind of floated out from watching it going oh my god that was awesome she's like well <laughs> but she she thought that lady jessica uh was portrayed a little bit too fearful because in the mm -hmm. book lady jessica is freaking she's a fierce. badass yep. yeah and so I, I kind of agree with that. Um, is that you know? Is she the one who's played by the girl from um, that HBO show? Euphoria? No, it's not Zendaya. Okay. No. It's 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 his, it's Paul's mom. Yeah. Paul's mom. Mm -hmm. Timothy Chalamet's mom. I don't know who these people are. I watched. You did. You fell asleep, didn't you? I did. Yeah. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know what? It's so it's it, it doesn't surprise me to tell you the truth because the, the the book is is pretty convoluted, and there's a lot of ground to cover in the first yeah. one. If you weren't familiar with it, I bet you it, I bet you it got boring. But for me, it was just like it was like visiting a uh, an old friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did so, you see it in the theater, or did you? See no, it no, I home? should have. I, I want to see it in the theater. I do too. Because um, after it seeing home. it at home, I want to I want it IMAX. I want yeah. the whole experience. We have multiple suggestions here now for your next project being yeah. either a Dune inspired pedal or a spice pedal. A spice pedal. pedal. The spiral yeah. spice. The old blue eye. There, there was already, the, you know what the spice pedal was? The spice yeah. pedal is that pedal that had the, the cable going from input to output. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very transparent overdrive. Yep, yep. Very nice. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, uh, what's. I mean, can you let us in a little bit of what's what's next? Uh... Well, I would I would love to do another small, um, but I gotta be honest the the the, the financial outlay to do um, a run of smalls is crushing. Right, mm -hmm. especially if you're having them all contract manufactured, and I mean, yeah. Yep. So, so even though um, I, I've sold more of the, the Demi than of any other pedal that I've ever introduced, I'm still, you know, not quite broken even, but close to broken even 
on mm-hmm. costs. It's 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 crazy expensive. So I would love to do one. I know that people have been asking for me to do like a, a version of the yellow. Um, and I would love to do it, but I just don't know if I can afford it. We'll have to see. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that, that's, that's the, the most obvious one. Cause everyone's been asking about that, but, but yeah, I've got a, I've got a couple of irons in the fire. I've been working on something called the Aleph, um, okay. that, uh, I've kind of teased a little bit. Um, I don't know when that's going to be released really. It, 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 it's, it feels it feels close, but you know, the Allura felt close and it took me another year of dicking around with it till I got it to the point where I was happy with it. So what um, was the, we'll, we'll see. There was one, there was one pedal that I demoed for you and it might've been the secret chord. I don't remember, but I remember, um, I was sending the proof, I think to you. And while I was sending it, um, your wife was on your Instagram account and she she was saying it because i you know i'm working at like two in the morning three in the morning and you know it was late and she had just put something up on instagram and it was like tom's still you know like putting together a lot the last of the you know last of the soldering and you know boxing everything up and getting it out um i don't remember which one that was but it's it seemed like you were burning the midnight oil to get that one yeah that, that was that, that was, was probably a production the, thing. that was probably the secret chord because well, I like I like to set deadlines for myself. You know, I I, I probably don't need to. You know, I, I could say this will be out. You know, do, do some pre-orders and I'll kind of you know dribble them out as I make them kind of thing. But um, I I don't know. I need I need a little bit of pressure. Um, yeah. And so I, I like to do batches. You know, so I'll do like you know fifty, sixty, you know eighty or whatever, and get those built. And I have a deadline I'm, when they go on sale. Yeah. And so I've got to bust ass to get them done. And, you know, it, it's, you know, I'm probably creating stress for myself, but if I didn't, I, I probably wouldn't ever get shit done. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I yeah, gotta have I mean, a deadline. You, so self-imposed deadlines are a must. You know that about yourself. Um, got a uh, question here. Uh, what is the nanolog molecular voodoo in the black spiral? Can you explain nanolog? So, explain nanolog just in, in general. Um, Partially All right, so, for so me. mostly for me. So, uh, how, how about let, let me let me give a little bit of history, then I'll give a little bit of technology. For what what little I know. Um, so I first met the Nanalog guys when I was working for Digitech at a Nam. Uh, probably. They're up in Canada, right? Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. they're they're Canadian guys. Did um, they it was hug probably you? Twenty. What was that? <laughs> Did they hug you? Did you guys hug it out? Every everybody <laughs> at Nam hugs, man. It's, they... <laughs> It's it's a hug fest. You know what? Post post COVID, it won't be the same though. Mm. So, we got we got that to look forward to. Um, but but Tom's yeah, so, like, so, I can't wait to go to like, Nam. I so swear to God, if you touch Tom at Nam, yeah, mm-hmm. the, the, the the fist the fist bump and the, the elbow <laughs> yeah. bump are are the coolest things ever. So no no more hugs. All right. So, so now I'm, now I'm alienating people. Yeah. This no, is great. it's fine. I just know. I just know what you have in store for mm-hmm. you for me when i see you mm. in, 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 uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. just a light light kiss on the ear from behind from ryan with a with a that's right le- with a leather vest with yeah. nothing on mm. just a vest, vest no pants <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the word the word for for nam is gonna be nuzzling yeah <laughs> there you go. that's what that n stands for yeah nuzzling yeah it'll be it'll be nuzzling it'll be great mm-hmm. Nuzzling and making moves. That's Nam. <laughs> Nuzzling and making moves. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. Uh, so you met you met the Nanolog guys. Oh yeah, Canada. yeah. We, we yeah. actually were talking about something. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, so it must. Uh, I think it was like 2012 or 2013 or something like that. But uh, um. So when I when I worked for Digitech, I, I'd of course have people coming up to me all the time trying to sell me on stuff. Uh-huh. And. Uh, and 99% of the time it's, you know, I, I don't want to say it's bullshit, but it's just not something I'd be interested in. Right. And, uh, and kind of like, they, they... like in the jerk when the guys win the oven mitt. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Great. <laughs> I bet you didn't fall asleep in the jerk now, yeah. did you? Right. Oh. I was going to say, can't <laughs> reference Dune, but you'll go back to the eighties for us. Appreciate that. <laughs> Sorry. But, <Harry>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you so, guys want an oven mitt? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh we're totally off track here all right so um, analog guys oh yeah, analog. Analog. <laughs> at nuzzling and making moves so, 
Yeah, so so they so they Thank came and, and and pitched me on it, and it was like a really quick, you know, five minute, you know, here's a cool thing we've been working on, and uh, I, I thought it was awesome, you know, but I had never heard it. And then about a month later, they sent me a couple of samples, and I tried it in a 250 circuit, and the, the N2 knocked me out. I thought it sounded great. Um, but I could not get any traction for it at all at Digitech. No one, no one gave a crap. Mm. And, and so, you know, I put it in the back of my, you know, in my back pocket, in the back of my head. And then when I first started thinking about what to do with Spiral, boom, I'm like, oh, I should hook up with those Nanolog guys. Yeah. And so I, I gave them a call. I tried it in, I got some samples in. I tried it in the black circuit and I loved it. Um, I thought it sounded great. It has, it has a nice, soft, um, kind of germanium feel but uh still you don't have a loss of volume and it mm -hmm. sounds it sounds more tight it's a little bit tighter but anyway uh so to skip over to the technology from what i understand from talking to those guys what it is is it's uh it's a sandwich of multiple materials that allows quantum tunneling to happen uh when a, a, a when a electrical signal is applied to one side and so quantum it acts tunneling. like a diode okay okay ryan if you had watched yeah, dune you would know what quantum <laughs> they tunneling. Go, they go over quantum tunneling in, in Dune? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. That, well, that's what they do under the that when they're under the the sand. Yeah. When yeah. the big when the big butthole snake is moving around. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> big butthole snake. Uh, yeah. Go rewatch Dune, and when you get to the part with the with the sandworms, you'll be like, oh yeah, that's a butthole snake. It does kind of look like a butthole. Yeah. Hole. All right. Mm -hmm. With teeth. <laughs> Different movie. I'm not sure how these you, two things are, you are coming to be <laughs> My turn for an 80s movie reference. <laughs> oh, oh, man. That's uh, quantum something. Yeah, so, quantum. so it allows what they call quantum tunneling. And it's basically, instead of a, 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 a voltage jumping across uh, multiple substrates, like it, it happens in a diode, it's uh, moving um, atoms or the, the electrons from atoms or something like that uh, between it. So that's the explanation that they gave to me. They have a, a lot more technical explanation on their website. Mm -hmm. The The bottom line for me is I think it sounds cool. Yeah. Um, are they still so, making pedals? They were for a while. Did that, are they now just making? Yeah, they, 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 they did. So the, here's their, their fuzz. That's the, the orbital. That has an analog, but I'm not sure if they're making more. Okay. But, uh, but yeah. So I, I use it. I use it on the um, the yellow. Um, sorry, sorry. I have to go past tense. I used it on the black, and I used it on the yellow. Um, but uh, I've just recently switched to what I call the ADN, and it's something that I came up with that uh, kind of captured my attention um, about a year ago. About I guess. Mm -hmm. But so I switched over to the ADN uh, just in the past year or so. Um, so the, the earlier the earlier blacks and yellows have the 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 N2, and the current 2021s all have the ADN. So is ADN similar technology to? No, it's just... no, no. So it's it's a uh, it's. I, I I don't want to give it away. I mean okay. I, I don't want to. Like, yeah, don't, it's, don't, it, it's, don't... Don't yeah, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to pretend like it's any kind of special sauce. It's it's an off the shelf part that I found yeah. that sounds cool. Yeah, that, that I use, it's, it's but the, it's kind of my thing. So yeah, yeah, it's the tube screamer shit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, yeah, the forty five fifty eight is yeah. my secret mm. sauce. Mm. <laughs> um, got a couple of questions here that are related. Mason Patton is interested if there's anything like the rubble rubber neck in spirals future and grants further to mason's question if you were to do a delay tom would it be something like the rubber neck or would it head in a different direction so that's a that's a tough one to to answer because um my off the cuff answer is i would love to do a, a an analog delay i mm -hmm. would love to um but that where it gets tough is um the the rubber neck was kind of a a culmination um, of, a, of quite a few years of, of messing with this stuff. So there's, it'd be tough to top it. Yeah. I mean, I, I know, I know every, uh, there would be no point for, uh, for me to do a rubberneck part two. Sure. It just doesn't, doesn't make it, any sense. To me. It exists. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah. 
So, so I, I'd have to do something that, that was better, and that would be hard. Right. And at the I, price I point, of the, at the, price yeah. point of the rubber neck, everybody should freaking have one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, you know, and that's a whole other weird thing too, because the price point, you know, that that was some weird post Samsung decisions, because you know um, the the, the two forty nine uh, price that it came out with originally, I thought was rock bottom, mm-hmm. you know, that th- that was as as low as we could go, and then somehow they're you know selling it for one seventy nine. That's a that's crazy town. Yeah. I don't know how I, they can do that. I don't remember what I paid for mine, but it was it didn't hurt. I remember it not hurting, <laughs> you know. Like. Yep. I mean, the, the prices have since gone up. I mean, uh, uh, Samsung has, has raised the price you know, since the, the their buyout. So uh, they kind of, I think they finally caught onto the fact that they were throwing fifty bucks away every time they, and they, they sold one at one seventy nine. But uh, yeah, it's it's that that blowout price. I never understood it, but that was it wasn't my decision to make. That was sure. after I was gone. Yeah. All right, hey uh, everyone, we got about five minutes left. So if you got some questions, uh, if you want to back Mr. Tom Cram into a corner with your technical questions, yep. <laughs> um, or you know just something that's going to make him a little uncomfortable, now is the time. Um, <clears throat> cool. Well, I mean, I you know I uh, I'm I'm really honored to have you here. Um, oh, thanks, man. I, I I kind of I think of you as you know kind of one of those legendary figures in the industry mm. you know, kind of, kind of get, See, I, now now you're making now you're making me uncomfortable you yeah. are doing the uncomfortable thing yeah uh you know kind of, you know like you know like you bjorn jules Zach Rex, you know like you guys are like the you guys are the old school awesome dudes and um and you guys have yeah you know, i feel like you have made a serious mark on the industry forever and um so I, it is um it's an honor to have you here, and I'm, I appreciate you. Man, I appreciate time. that. I, 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 I don't. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bobo Bannon, I, I think <clears throat> this is. I think I know what he's asking. He just asked, "What is brute?" Um, I think he's asking. What is what the, brute? Yeah, I think he's asking what the guts are. Otherwise, it is a, a cologne commonly worn worn <laughs> by uh, men who lived through the mm. depression. Also, a style of champagne. <laughs> That is also a style of champagne. The 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 brut um, is a uh, a variation on the black, but instead of using uh, the the two N fifty eighty nines, which are very very modern transistors, it's using uh, vintage uh, BC one hundred eight Cs in Q one and Q two, which puts it uh, a, a lot more into the fuzz space camp. Yeah. So it's more of a low gain version, and it's a lot darker and a lot friendlier. Um, <laughs> And that would make sense why, and that, that was the first one you said, you and I talked at NAM, and you were like, you know, I put this pedal out, it didn't get the kind of love it deserved. Um, and um, so, um, so you're like, I'd love to send you one, and then we did it like a year later. Um, and it was the first pedal of yours that I had tried in my rig, because I had tried your pedals that I didn't own, and you know, on other people's rigs in that NAM and stuff like that. But this is the first time that I had brought one into my studio, and really spent time with it and like um it was a it was a game change i mean and i love fuzz face and i love that so like they kind of fit right in it was in your wheelhouse it was in the groove that that i'm most comfortable in um and then it just it just lived on my board because it was just like this thing is incredible and it does yeah it's it's big it's become it's become one of my best selling fuzzes it's it's actually my favorite fuzz that i make um It's it's got it can it can get crazy, but not punishing. It it's it can sound sweet. It can sound mean. Yep. It can be an overdrive. It can be a full on buzzing, you know, buzzing bee fuzz. It's pretty versatile. I, I love I love the brute. Stacks like a son of a biscuit, you know. Like it is just, and <clears throat> I mean, it doesn't care what you have in front of it. it still cleans up. You know, like yeah, it, just... it can be post buffer. It doesn't care. It can be front of your chain, end of your chain. It can be you know s- smacked with an overdrive, smacked with a boost. Yep. And, and actually, that's that's one of the cool things that I, that I like about the the, the Maestro FC One S circuit is that first stage of transistor. Um, it likes to be hit hard, mm-hmm. and so most most fuzzes, if you hit it with like a, an active pickup, they'll they'll freak out. Yeah. yeah. But uh, the this circuit 
loves being hit hard. Likes to be spanked. Yes. So does Kyle. Only at Nam. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brute or Black Spiral for a Telly plus Princeton Reverb setup. I'm going to go Brute. With... Yeah. yeah. Brute. I'm going to go with Brute as well. Um, Bobo wants to know what's on your pedal board, Tom. Um, I, right now I've got an Allura. Um, um, I, I had a Brute for a long time. It's and just, it's just a board with an Allura. Steve right in the middle. Perfect. <laughs> it's just what, <laughs> just one Allura. Oh, so he, he wants to know what's on the entire board. Uh, mm -hmm. so it goes, uh, uh, a Morley Maverick Fuzz into, um, a yellow into well, sorry, into a tuner. And then from the tuner into a yellow, from the yellow into a an Allura, and then into a uh, HBE psilocybe, um, and then to that. a rubberneck. And that's that's a, a, a homebrew electronics psilocybe phaser. It's a. Oh. Um, you should look into HBE stuff. They're, they're, they no longer exist, but all of his shit was awesome. Really? All of it. I'll check it out. Um, I, I remember homebrew. I just. Never shortened the name. I have got. This is this is an HBE's version of the graphic fuzz. Okay. And the HBE um, uh, ultimate octave. Mm. Is that UFO? Okay. Ultimate fuzz octave. But uh, yeah, he was he was one of the early. Uh, I would say probably not the first wave of boutique guys. One of the second wave of boutique guys, mm -hmm. and he, all the stuff he made was killer. Cool. But his psilocybe phaser, if you can find one, they're they're awesome. Okay, I'll look for it. I just, all I need is another white whale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then it goes. Let's see. So I I stopped at the rubberneck. Yep. Um, and then it goes to. I think that's no. Then I've got a ban banana, uh, mandala in the the effects loop of the rubberneck okay and i don't know if, you, I don't know if you've played one of those but it's, I it's played one, but i'm familiar they're, they're cool yeah but so what it what in the in the effects loop of the uh, rubberneck uh, what it, i can do with that thing is it has a momentary switch and so i can momentarily put uh push it and make it go into lo-fi weird ring modded uh you know weird stuff it's cool yeah yeah sweet and that's that's my pedal board. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I have all of my questions that I had for Mr. Tom Cram out of the way. Do you have any closing questions before we? My only one is: Are are there any pedals you don't have that you want? What are you <laughs> hunting for? Or any I have piece a lot of, of pedals. Gear. Um, yeah, we can see that. So the the ones that are on my walls here are mostly fuzz though. I um, I'm I'm a total fuzz idiot. I yeah, um, but I always I, I think the word that I used to describe you uh, or the phrase I used to describe you in, in a video was uh, yes, one of my favorite dirt merchants because I like I feel yes, like, dirt merchant. I feel like you have <laughs> like I mean your wheelhouse is or your comfort spots is definitely in in creating dirt. Yep. Yep, overdrives, fuzzes, boosts, that kind of stuff is is where, where I'm at. Well, I, you know, and I love delays. I've got a, a shit ton of delays too, but uh, I don't know. You know, I, I've I've always wanted to have a, an original big box deluxe memory man. Yeah. Um, speaking of delays, um, you know, I've got some some older, you know, vintage analog delays, and they have their problems, sure. but they also have their charms. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's there's a couple of vintage fuzzes that I still you know would like to get. I've got, you know, I've got a pretty good collection of of hard to find, rarer vintage fuzzes, but there are definitely some white whales out there that you know I know I'll never afford, but yeah. every once in a while, you, you know, you you get lucky and you run across one. Yeah, no, I but, mean, like I could I could go find a Dallas Arbiter fuzz base. Can I afford one? That's a no. There he goes. Oh, there it is. Yeah. He's got two. I know he does. Oh, oh. man. Oh. Mm. Is it a good one? Dude, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 so good. It is. You know, I, I, it's they're, they're 
you know, some of the some of the the is it the late nineties, some of the late nineties red ones that were done that had yeah, kind of the that had the, the fake the, the fake NK yeah, the fake, in them. You know, it's, so that that was actually my first introduction to to fuzz faces. Okay. And I'd play those and I'd be like, What? Mm-hmm. You know, what why, why why does anyone care? And then a buddy of mine let me play this one. Um and the heavens okay. open. Yeah. And, Game over. Yeah. It's it's a completely different pedal. I, it's it's they're so awesome. I like I like I like when I go over to someone's house or you know like it's studio and they and they have one and it happens to be a bad one because you know like they exist. They're you know and and I, I like they, when that happens because I'd be like <laughs> name just, names. I'll just go back to analog man. Yeah. <laughs> you know like <laughs> <laughs> who do we know that has a bad one? I want to know. Shout them uh, out. I think John Fields has a bad one. Ooh, sorry, so, John. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, man, this is uh, this has been a lot of fun. We are unfortunately over time. Ooh. Over time. Whoops. And um, I could probably talk to you for another three hours. Yep. And I feel like we wouldn't even <laughs> scratch the surface of things we could talk about. We'll do a part two when the next Dune comes out. Maybe yeah, Ryan yeah, will get just, caught we'll up. Yeah, there we go. Dune and Yamaha. Mm-hmm. That'll be it'll be a two part. Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll have my SBG with me, and we can do a review of my fuzzes, of yeah. all the fuzzes on the wall. Not my fuzzes, but these fuzzes. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, next time I'm in Salt Lake City, I'm going to come hang out yeah. in that place. I think, so I think that would be a lot of fun. I think I'll More be there welcome. in the spring, so I'll see you then. Uh, sounds over. good. I'm going to figure out where you live. Don't tell me. I'm just going <laughs> to go door knocking. You'll just, you'll just drive around for a while? Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, man. Well, we will let you go. You have a good rest of your evening, and um, yeah, we already have people asking for part two, so uh, we'll we'll figure out how to do that. Yeah. Um, but thank, uh, thank actually, you, gentlemen. I appreciate your time, sir. Great to meet you. Have a good, good one. Good time. Good to meet you too, man. Right. Yeah. Talk to you later. Later's. God, can you ask for a more like genuine, down to earth dude? I just, I know he hates it, but I just want to hug him. I know. I just want to hug him. I know. Yep. And, you know, I mean, like, and I know, I, you know, he said that I was making him uncomfortable when I was telling him what a freaking legend he mm-hmm. is. And and I knew, I, I mean, I, I heard him, yep. but at the same time, I was like, I think maybe I'm saying this more for me than I am for you. Yep. Like, I, you know, like, I just, I, you know, I just. Sometimes we have to fanboy. Yeah. I, you know, I, I always think about, like, if I were to ever meet Paul McCartney, mm-hmm. you know, I would say to him the same things that everybody says to him yeah which was you know like you changed my life you you know whatever remember when you said uh the love you take is equal to the love you make (laughs) that was really cool i would say all the same things to him and and he and knowing that he had heard it before but just kind of like well you know what it's it's because it's true i'd just kiss him i'd just go for it i would too and then i'd get arrested yeah you know, his, his security guards would haul me off. And... Yeah, but then you go before a judge, and they're like, why did you kiss Paul McCartney? You're like, it's Paul McCartney! And then you're like, Your Honor, I'd like to call Paul McCartney to the stand, and then they can't help it but kiss Paul McCartney. <laughs> and then you're off. Um, Now I'm thinking about subpoenaing Paul McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> so our next, our next one was at the end of this month. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are going to have Emily Hopkins and her partner Russ on. And if you're not familiar with Emily, Emily plays the harp and she does gear demos through her harp. Um, and uh, she has I, there's others. It's just one of the more. Inter- it's so cool. It's one of the more entertaining YouTube channels out there if you're a nerd. And, mm-hmm. um, and we are. Yeah. And so it'll be very exciting to have uh have them on and um we are this close to nailing down a date with a guitar player who i believe that we all will recognize as being a a a true legend and innovator and uh way too cool to be on our little show but um is it paul mccartney it's paul mccartney um uh and josh scott yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I would love it. That's really 
I, Josh, I, how many more times do we got to make fun yeah. of you before you come on this show? I can't wait to get Paul McCartney and then be like, sorry, Paul, we double booked you. We're just going to have you both on. <laughs> Technically, we asked Josh for it. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. That's all I got for the night. Thank you guys uh, for hanging out. Um, I appreciate you being here. Um, and thank you for being here. And I just um, I just wait in your bathroom until yeah, the next just, one. I don't see much at all. And, uh, yeah, oh. if, if you guys didn't get, uh, oh, no, Red Shell. No, it's not Red Shell. Don't worry. Uh, I love Red Shell, but no. Um, <clears throat> uh, so from, uh, from Kai, myself, and Leo, uh, thank you for your time, and have a good week. Come on back here next time for uh, Emily Hopkins. Yep.